Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. I'm continuing with my message today on the great harvest. Save me the great harvest. We know that the only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ. And we know the only way is to evangelize and most of us that have given our lives to Jesus, the way we got there was somebody sharing the gospel. Might it be a parent, might it be a grandparent, might it be a friend, but somebody shared the gospel. And that's why it's so important that we need to have a God-given burden for people. Say to me, God-given burden. Say to me, a compassion. Having a love for people. To say that you love people and you don't tell them to about Jesus doesn't make sense. Because if people die, they're going to be without the Lord. We've in this last couple of years, we've had instances where, and not just one, there were, a, there were a few, I think two or three that I know of personally, where we led people to Jesus the day before they died. And they didn't know they were going to die. And that's why when it comes to understanding how urgent this is, and that when the Holy Spirit places that burden upon your heart, you need to respond. We are here all because of the grace of God within our life, because God loved us so much. Now the question is also, ought we not to love others? And that is the challenge for us today. We need to have a passion for the lost. Not being so obsessed with our own needs and our own issues and our own things that we get to the place that all we see is ourselves, which means your eyes are down. And that's why when Abraham spoke and he had the issue with Lot in Genesis chapter 13, Abraham was consumed with his nephew that he helped that was stabbing him in the back and the issues. And then God said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, uh, he said, hey, buddy, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes and see. Up your neighbor and say, Ish, lift up your eyes. Tell your neighbor, seriously, neighbor. <laughs> lift, lift, lift up your eyes and see. Another translation, another verse is, see that the Lord is good. We're so caught up in the things that are wrong. We're so caught up in our battles. We're so caught up in our struggles that we don't see. But here's the thing with struggles. Struggles is what we do. Struggles don't go away. But the problem is, is when you're fighting your own struggles, God says you don't have to fight your own struggles. He says when you struggle for other people's struggles and other people's issues, God says, I take care of your struggles. He's saying, take your eyes off your Get your eyes out of the, off the ground. Get your eyes like a chicken. You know, peck, 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 peck. You know, get your eyes. Soar like an eagle. Amen. Lift up your eyes and see. Are, are you hearing me here today? And that's why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 29 and 18, it says there that where there is no vision, he says, my people perish. Another translation says, the people run wild. Another translation says, the people are unrestrained. And you look at the world today. Everybody does what they want, when they want, how they want. They're unrestrained. Are you hearing me? Why? They can't see. Everything is about me. 
Everything is about my life, what I can. I, 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 I. God says, no, no, take your eyes off. Proverbs 11.30 says, he who wins souls is wise. Are you hearing me? Because wise, winning souls is positional. Winning souls is position where you're at determines your success. When your eyes are down, you can't go anywhere. When you lift up your eyes, now you can see beyond your issues and pain and hurt. You lift up your eyes and see others, have compassion on others. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 9 and 36, he says the following, he says, and Jesus saw them. When Jesus saw the multitudes, what did he do? He saw. What did he do? He saw. He was moved with? When he did what? When he saw. When he saw the multitudes, he was negative and blamed the government. No. No. Because here's the thing when you blame. It's an excuse for you to do nothing. That's all it is. So before you blame, what are you doing? I'm not saying that government hasn't got their responsibility. But what I'm saying is you can't say anything if you yourself are not doing anything. And that's why it's the church that will bring about the change. It's the church that will bring about the transformation within a nation because it starts with us doing what? Lifting up our eyes and see, having vision. Because if you don't have vision, you will be unrestrained. You will run wild. You don't know. You're just going where you're going. When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. Because he saw that they were, they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. They were what? Weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. What was the issue? No shepherd. So, well, the president must... He doesn't stay in your neighborhood. He doesn't stay in your neighborhood. Who stays in your neighborhood? You. He doesn't work at your job. Who works there? You. He doesn't go to school where you go to school. So whose responsibility is it? It's your responsibility. And that's why in the book of Exodus, when, 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 when Moses was busy ministry, uh, 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 getting the tablets and the law, and at the bottom, Aaron was building a calf, and, and, and the people, the Bible says, and Moses came down, and, and Aaron, who's supposed to be the leader, the shepherd, what he found is that the people, the Bible says, and the people were unrestrained. And then he said to Aaron, He says, why would you allow the people to do this? He didn't just judge the people. He says, why did you not restrain them? People are unrestrained. Why? Because a lack of testimony, a lack of witness, a lack of compassion. And that's why he says, He says, what did these people do to you that you have brought this great sin upon them? My question to you today, what did your neighbors do to you? that you have been staying there for two years 
and you've not told them about Jesus, what did they do to you? They're unrestrained, doing their parties, doing their things, smoking their weed. What did your neighbors do to you? What did your colleagues do to you? What did your fellow scholars, students, and friends do to you? What did your relatives do to you that you would not witness and tell them about Jesus, that you would allow them to go to hell? What did they do to you? How can you be so wicked? What did they do to you? That's the question. That's the question. That God, through Moses, Moses asked Aaron, what did these people do to you? That you got no compassion for them. Hello. And then he goes on. Moses saw the people were unrestrained. And Moses, that's when he said to Aaron, the people were unrestrained. He said, for Aaron had not restrained them to their shame among the enemies. Aaron did not restrain them. Aaron didn't have an army to kill people. He didn't have a militia to control, manipulate people. How would he restrain them? By his leadership. By the word of God. Are you hearing me? That is within him. And that is my question to us today. Do you love South Africa? What did South Africa do to you that you would not share your, your testimony? Are you hearing me here today? What did your sister do to you? What did your mother do to you that you would allow them to burn in hell for eternity and live unrestrained? and not share the love of God. Is this helping somebody? Yes. So this is a time of urgency. This is urgency. Say it me, urgent. urgent. But it comes from a heart. It comes from a passion. And where does the passion come from? The passion comes from experiencing the love of God within your own life. And that's what we read in Romans chapter 8, and I've shared it before. Romans chapter 8 says, Who shall separate us, verse 35, from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril, or sword? No, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Verse 37 says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us. Verse 31 says, If God is for us who can be against us. Hallelujah. Listen to this. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all delivered, how shall he not? How shall he not freely give us all things? Shout it out. How shall he not? How shall he not? Shout it out. How shall he not? How shall he not? You see, that's the love we have. Another translation says, another translation says, he certainly won't withhold anything. If he's already giving Jesus, how much more? Say to me, how much more? Say to me, how much more? Say to me, how much more? See, that's the love we have in Christ. See, this is the gospel. This is the good news. The good news is, your sins can be forgiven. That's, that's the good news. What must I pay? Nothing. 
nada, nothing, no money, nothing. It's by grace you have been saved. Isn't that incredible? Amen. That's the gospel. No matter your condition, no matter where you are, God doesn't say, well, fix yourself up and then I'll see if I can have you. He says, no, come to me just the way you are. Hallelujah. Just the way all you have to do is give me your life and believe. God says, I will forgive you. I will cleanse you. I'll remove your sin as far as the east is from the west. And I will remember it no more. And as you come to him, God says, I won't just forgive you. He says, I will cleanse you. I will change you. I will transform you. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 1 says, for there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That's the gospel. What did your neighbors do that you don't share that? Are you hearing me? Therefore, I want to encourage us. The Bible says, skipping a bunch of stuff here. The Bible gives us a, the way to communicate. Romans 10. How then, verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? But hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. And he says, whoa, whoa, whoa. How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on now. Whoa, let's step one back now. How shall they hear without a preacher? That word preacher is not an, a, it's not an official position, pastor, preacher. It's not. It's proclaimer. Somebody that speaks. It's not the job. It's the function. Then verse 15. He says, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? Then he says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of revenge, of retribution, of what? Of peace, who brings glad tidings of good things. That means glad tidings of good things. Says me glad tidings, glad tidings of good things. Then he says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Verse 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The salvation to our nation and the nations of this great continent of Africa is us understanding that we are sent. That's why he said, go and preach the gospel in the book of Mark 16. Matthew 28, he says, go and make disciples. What must you do? Go. go. Amen. Amen. Those feet were not made to wear branded shoes. Check your neighbor's shoes. It does not say how beautiful are the shoes. Oh, I'm touching something now. The Bible doesn't say how beautiful are the 
shoes because the way the gospel is preached in many churches today, that's how it sounds. Like, you know, it's the brand that glorifies God. No, no. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Half those brands are made by people that don't know the Lord. It's not the brand, it's the feet. So some of you will have to kick off those shoes. You're more brand conscious than shoe conscious. Now, nothing wrong with wearing brands, please. Okay, that we buy here from the Chinese for 20 rand. Yellow. How beautiful are the feet? How beautiful are the feet? How beautiful are the feet? Do you have beautiful feet or do you have to cover it up with beautiful shoes? How beautiful are the feet of them who preach the good news. And I know, I know for a fact because I live, we breathe 3C Church. I know, yeah, we got beautiful feet. We got beautiful feet. Forget my shoes, forget my handbag, forget my man bag. Forget my vehicle and my car, my status. That's not beautiful. It's my feet, baby. He who wins souls is wise. Why look good if you can be good? What are you covering up? You hearing me yet today? How do we do this? The good news. Now what if we can stand to our feet just stay where you are? Become aware of the presence of God in this place. See, many of us, why do we find ourselves in the mess that we're in? Our eyes are on what we wear. And by that, please, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying you must look all sloppy, and that's not what I'm saying. But being obsessed to present yourself as something you're really not. Because your beauty is what you have on the inside. That you'll take your eyes and lift up your eyes, lift up your eyes and see. See the hurt, see the pain. See the people that are crying for, they're crying for you. They're crying. They need beautiful feet that will share the glad tidings, the good news, not the bad news, not the bad news. Oh, not News 24. Not the Soweto, no. No, 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 not the bad news. The good news. They need Jesus. And how they're going to get saved, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, not the news. Not the gossip, not the latest, but the good news amidst all the things that we are going through in the darkness that we're experiencing, there is light. We serve a God who loves us, a God who cares for us. And no matter the tribulation we go through, 
no matter the distress we experience, no matter whether we're going through persecution, famine, and the Bible says peril, or even sword. In other words, even death. Yet in all these things that we go through, we are more than conquerors. Conquerors. That's the good news. So Paul is saying now, I've experienced his love. Now it's my obligation it's my drive, it's my passion now to transfer that love onto others. That's my obligation. And that's why Paul says, for the love of Christ compels me. It drives me. What gets me up in the morning? The love of God. What gets me up in the morning? What drives me in the day? What's the passion? It's the love of God for what God has done within my life. He can do within your life. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me. Even as a Christian, at receiving the love of Christ, if you are not transferring that love and living out the purpose of God by being the, 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 the one that goes, you're always going to be dissatisfied. Always. And here's the thing. You're always going to try, fill it with something. Now you place expectations on your wife, but you're unhappy. Your wife cannot. She cannot full, fulfill those needs. Your husband Ma'am, he can't fulfill that need. He's not God. Parents and children, and we have this, 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 these expectations, unwarranted expectations that we place upon people, my boss and my people and that and the government and everybody. And at the end of the day, the reason you're dissatisfied is because you're not fulfilling your mandate and purpose. And that's why when you win souls, why are you wise? It's because your eyes are up. You're looking. You see, they're without a shepherd. And then what does the Lord say after that? He says, now you need to pray for the Lord of harvest to do what? Send out? Laborers. Send, send out. So we send out. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to trust the Lord. Come on, somebody. We're going to trust the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands just there where you are. Hallelujah. And say with me, Heavenly Father, please forgive me for looking down, having my eyes on myself. Today I make a decision to lift up my eyes off my own needs, off my own circumstances, because I know you've got me in your hands because you love me. You've sent me Jesus. I know you will do much more. Therefore, I will not worry about my life. You're in control. But I make a decision today, Lord, to lift up my eyes, see the needs of others, see the cry of others. I make a decision today that I will proclaim the gospel, that I will preach the gospel, that I will share the good news of what you have done in my life that I will touch others in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a mighty hand of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise and praise and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Maybe there's somebody here today you've not yet given your life to Jesus. I want to give you this opportunity Calling yourself Christian doesn't mean you're Christian. Going to church doesn't mean you're Christian. Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You, you're blind to godliness. You're blind to godly purpose. And if you're blind, who's ever committed to you, follows a blind man, a blind woman. And therefore it's important that you get to God. He loves you, He cares for you, and He wants to forgive you, cleanse you. You see, out of yourself, you cannot change God. He's not saying change yourself and come. He says, no, come just as you are. 
Come with all your rubbish. Come with all your mess. Come with all your past experiences. God says, I will change you. See, you don't have the, right, you don't have the ability to change yourself. You can modify your behavior to a certain degree, but you can't change who you are. But God can change you. He'll change your nature. Therefore, if there's somebody here today, you've not yet given your life to Jesus. And on count to three, and I want you to raise your hand, or you gave your life to Jesus, you backslidden, you want to come back to Jesus. If that's you, quickly slip up your hand. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see those hands. Thank you right there at the back. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You can put your hands down. I want to ask one more time, as I said just now, now is the time of salvation. Jesus said now. He, another translation, he says, today, today. You're not guaranteed you'll be alive tomorrow. No guarantee. There's people that woke up this morning that will not see the end of this day. That's a fact of life. Fact of life. Fact of life. We've got students that we are helping this week. They were just in a bus. A robbery took place. They were just passing by. Bullets went through that bus. One of the students passed. One of the students in hospital. We don't know. There's so much evil in this world. Therefore, I want to encourage you. Don't leave here and your life is not right. And even if you think, well, I can do it later. Here's the thing. God is speaking to you right now. You might never sense you need God ever again because you're in an atmosphere of faith. You might never sense you need God again. But God is speaking to you right now. Don't delay. Don't delay. And don't play with God. I want to ask one more time, if you never raise your hand, quickly slip it up now. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. See those hands going up all over. Thank you very much. Now, venues, thank you. Thank you. Now, I want us to do one more thing. If you raise your hand, I want to do a personal prayer with you. It's so important that I pray with you. And throughout all our venues, I wonder, please take your, take your belongings. Don't leave it on the chair. Quickly come out in the front here. Quickly come pray with me. Come. Come on. Yes. your heads in prayer, every head bowed, every eye closed. Say these words with me. Say to me, dear Jesus, I need you in my life. Please forgive my sin. Take out this old nature. Fill me with your spirit. Everything that I am, I give to you. My whole life, I surrender unto you. Lord, I trust you. I trust your word that says if I receive you and believe, I have the right to be called the child of God. And thank you, Lord, as from now, I am yours. And Lord, I pray for each and every person as they've come forward and have given their lives to you. Every power of the devil broken over their lives right now in Jesus' name. You set them free from their past, Lord. A new start, a new beginning in their lives. And you lead and guide them in all things, Lord. Your hand upon their lives in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 086-111-2345 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at PO Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv 
at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY, followed by your prayer request to 33347, and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347, and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates, and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.